Um, so this is what I'm going to talk about is can a cool Christian chill with evolution? How many people here are cool Christians? Yeah, Indiana, he's cool, yeah. You go, cool Christians. Okay, now the rest of you can train the other ones on how to be cool the rest of the school year. But for cool Christian, can a cool Christian chill with evolution? What does WWJD stand for? What would Jesus do? Yeah, most people have heard of that. Well, look, you know, we go to, to a school, and you're going to a private school here where they don't believe in evolution, but if you go into public school, they do believe in evolution. And then you watch the Discover Channel and Animal Planet and all these, uh, read National Geographic, and evolution's every, everybody else believes in evolution, it looks like, and they act all smart about it. It's hard to feel cool when everyone's calling you dumb. So that's why I'm asking this question. Can you be a cool Christian and be okay with evolution? What if evolution's not true? Now, the Bible, we're going to talk about this. What the Bible says about how life got on this planet and how living things work is really different from evolution. Let's go ahead and start then. Okay. This is Richard Dawkins. How many ever heard of the book, The God Delusion? The God Delusion. Nope, nobody has. Well, Dr. Dawkins, just in 2006, he's old now, but he was younger in 1989 when he said that in 2006 he wrote a book called The God Delusion. If you are deluded, what does that mean? Indiana. What's your actual name, Indiana? Elijah, that's right, Elijah. Elijah, okay, you raised your hand, but then you changed your mind. All right. If you're deluded, it means that you're making stuff up and you believe stuff that's not true. You're deluded. Well, the God delusion, uh, Dawkins says that people who believe in God are making stuff up, and they're believing in stuff that's a fairy tale. But look what he said in 1989 in the New York Times. How many of you ever heard of the New York Times? In the New York Times, he said this about us. It is absolutely safe to say that if you meet somebody who claims not to believe in evolution, that person is ignorant, stupid, or insane. Okay. He's a biology professor at Oxford University. How many ever heard of Oxford? Oxford University in England. And he said, if you don't believe in evolution, you're ignorant, stupid, or insane. Is this person open-minded? Is this person fair? No. Does, is this person prejudiced? Against who? Us. Anybody who doesn't believe in evolution. Anyone who claims not to believe in evolution. How does he know that I'm ignorant, stupid, or insane? I'm not ignorant. I'm a college professor like him. I'm not stupid. I'm a member of Mensa, the genius club. You have to be a genius to get into Mensa. And, okay, we'll go to the next one here. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kidding. Uh, who, who is Albert Einstein? He was a smart person. Look what he says. The important thing, Albert Einstein did, said, the important thing is don't stop questioning. Don't stop questioning. Now, in a lot of religions, it's a sin to question your faith. But the Bible says to question your faith. The Bible says, God says, test and see if the Lord is not good. See if I won't bless you. Shaken down, a good measure, overflowing. Now, there's questioning your faith that's a good way, and there's questioning it's a bad way. By this, I mean, I could question you. What's your name again? McKenna. McKenna, that's right. The McKenna, who is not named Hannah. Okay. McKenna, I could question you, and you would start to think that I like you. And I could say things like, you know, where did you find that shirt that is so nice? You know, or I could say, you know, wow, I love your skin tone. It's so beautiful. <laughs> or I could say, wow, I'll bet pretty soon those braces are coming off, you know. And that's all nice stuff. But if I say, if I come up and I say, oh, have you always had braces? I'll bet they hurt. You probably have cap. I could, I could ask questions that are mean questions, and I can ask questions that are good questions, you know, nice questions. I mean, some questions are just to be mean. That's not the kind of questions I'm saying. I'm talking about questions to find out the truth. Jesus said, I am the way and the life. Okay, no man cometh to the Father but by me. He also said that you shall know the truth and the truth shall you. What? Well, it, the, the, truth, the, the truth shall set you free. free. Okay, truth is good. You ask questions to find out the truth. That's what science is all about. But uh, that's what Albert Einstein was talking about. How many ever heard of Bob Marley? Bob Marley. There you go. You know Marley. 
Bob Marley in one of his songs says, don't let them try to fool you or even try to school you. So when they try to teach you something in school that's, uh, that's fooling you, it's foolish, it's not true, don't believe it. And how many of you know who Fred Rogers is? Who is Fred Rogers? Yes, Fred Rogers is Mr. Rogers, that's right. Mr. Rogers. Yeah, well, now his friend Mr. Feely gives out the mail, yeah. And King Friday is a little puppet, you know. Well, some people are scared of puppets. I'm sure that's puppet phobia. <laughs> Mr. Rogers didn't always talk to five-year-olds. This is what he sounds like when he's talking to another grown-up. Look what he says. Anything we can do to help foster the intellect, the intelligence, and spirit, the spirit you have inside of you, of our fellow human beings, that is our job. Those of us who have this particular vision must continue against all odds. Mr. Rogers was a cool guy. How many of you know he was a, he was a sniper, a sharpshooter in World War II? Yeah, he was, he was a sharp, he was like a sniper. You know, how many of you know that Mr. Rogers was an ordained minister? Yeah, a minister. He was a pastor. Well, you know, his, his show always had all kinds of cool Christian sort of, you know, right and wrong and all that, how to be nice and courteous and stuff like that. But anyway, Mr. Rogers said that we should foster the intellect and spirit. And I think that's the same thing Einstein and Bob Marley are saying. We shouldn't call people stupid just because they disagree with us. We should try to learn instead. And I'm sure those braces are coming off soon. Okay, here we go. Now, here you could be a cool Christian and say, oh, no, I know I can believe in evolution. And, oh, you're quick. This is the smart class. Yeah. You saw that one. Yes. It is a face, but it also spells liar when you turn it sideways. But the cool Christian might say, oh, I can compromise evolution and creation. I can believe in evolution and still believe in the Bible, and I can be cool. Here's a pastor who thinks he's being cool when he preaches from his pulpit where evolution is true and the Bible is not. That's what he's saying. In the beginning, the book of Genesis does not need to be accepted as historical fact. It is merely a simple story containing various truths. In fact, I've rewritten this section of scripture to reflect the true nature of the story. Genesis chapter 1, once upon a time. That's how a what starts? A fairy tale. Fairy tales start that way. Is the Bible a fairy tale? No, not if you believe it. It's not. The Bible doesn't start. There's a kind of a way that a writer writes when they're writing fairy tales, and it's like that. And there's a kind of a way that a writer writes when it's a history book. The Bible is written in historical narrative form, not in mythical form, not in prosaic form. So uh, the Bible is not supposed to be, or long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. I mean, it's not supposed to be like that. It's really supposed to be history. How many ever heard of H.G. Wells, the author H.G. Wells? Okay, now, he wrote many books. He wrote the, the, movie, the book The Time Machine, and recently there was a movie with Dakota Fanning and Tom Cruise in it that was about a book he wrote back in the 1930s or 20s. What was that? What was that? Tom Cruise, Dakota Fanning... War of the Worlds, War of the Worlds. Now, he was a good science fiction writer, but H.G. Wells was also an atheist. If you're an atheist, you do not believe in God. You don't believe in God. That's what atheism is. He was a very well-known, famous atheist, and look what he says. He's talking about evolution. 